Hey friends, hey friends, hey friends, it's me Alana, welcome back to my channel. some flowers in a world full of weeds. Hey friends, it's me Alana. Welcome back to my channel. For this video, I wanted to do my January wrap up and my February TBR. So first I'm going to start with my wrap up and then I'll slide into what I will be reading in February. So the first book I read in January was a bitey read that I partook in with Aaron from Booked and Busy and Kay from I Love Books Okay. We all read The Beautiful by Renee Audier together. This is actually a reread for me. And then we also read The Damned as well, which is the second book to The Beautiful. I gave The Beautiful four out of five stars as a reread. Uh, it was a little bit harder for me to get through this time around. I think mostly just because I still like kind of remembered everything. So it was a little redundant for me to reread every single thing. But still enjoyed it, still loved Celine and Sebastian. But uh, then we moved on to The Damned and I gave this 5 out of 5 stars. So the first book, The Beautiful, was very slow building. But once you get into The Damned, that's when the story really, really picks up and just goes for me, in, uh, in my opinion. So... I enjoyed the fact that we literally just jumped into the story and just got to running and I loved that we got to explore the world, uh, especially the supernatural world, even more in this and we got a lot of answers that were asked in the first book but also new questions that are probably going to be answered within this third book that's coming out this year. So I really, really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed Celine and Bastion's relationship. I just love them together. I think they have such good harmony together as a couple and I'm just like looking forward to seeing what the third book brings. With the way the second book ended, the third book is definitely gonna just bring more like questions and answers and chaos honestly. So I'm definitely excited to uh, get my hands on that one. All right, to so the next book I read in January was Scarlet's Wings by Erin Stewart. I gave this a three out of five stars. I thought it was a pretty okay story. Um, it's about a girl who survived a house fire and I believe she had like a significant amount of burns on her body, especially from her like face to like her torso to like parts of her legs and arms and so it's basically her family decides that it's time for her to go back to school in person and so it's about her overcoming this fear that people won't love her because of the way she looks and through that she finds some really good friendships and just relationships in general and a good community within her school to fit into for lack of better words but i enjoyed the message of the story it was a pretty simple story overall i still thought it was good um i will say trigger warnings for i believe anxiety panic attacks depression grief and there are flashbacks to when the fire is happening so definitely um, trigger warnings for that. Um, also encourage you to look them up on Goodreads because I may have missed a few uh, and I'd rather you get more information if need be. So the next book I read was QQ Sweeper Volume 1 by Kyosuke Motomi. So this caught my eye and I was definitely intrigued by it. It's about a girl who moves to town and she doesn't have any family so she's basically homeless and this boy who's basically a demonic sweeper which means like he helps um cleanse spaces for people who are easily susceptible to be taken over like by demons and so she somehow gets involved with this um job that he's doing because she has some type of special ability to, I guess, see what's going on unlike other people. 
So it's a cute manga. I think I have the rest of the volumes here, so I'm definitely looking forward to reading more. And this creator, he wrote, um, I think it's Dengeki Daisy and Beastmaster, which I haven't read the first one, but Beastmaster I've read, and I really liked that one as well, which is mainly why I decided to pick this one up. So yeah, pretty good. Next, I read Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dad. I gave this a four out of five stars. I thought it was a really cute romance. It's about a girl who ends up, through special circumstances, being asked out on a date by a really popular actor who plays in one of her all-time favorite shows. She really likes writing uh, fan fiction about the show and she's really big into cosplay as well. And from there, like, a relationship sparks. I really liked the story. I thought their relationship between Marcus and April was so genuine and real and I loved how they could be so comfortable with each other from the beginning and it really didn't get like weird at all. I appreciated how open like Marcus was emotionally like instead of just like shutting down whenever they had an argument or just a disagreement or whenever she like was just having like a moment he really like was really big on talking about it like talking about what he was feeling why he was upset and I really appreciated that because I feel like you don't see that in the main male love interest that often I will say it was cool seeing how like the fan fiction and the cosplay played into the role into the story I personally didn't really care that much about it but I enjoyed seeing that aspect. I'm definitely looking forward to reading the next book because I think the next one takes place um, with Marcus's best friend and I really enjoyed seeing parts of him in this story so I'm definitely thinking I'm gonna pick up the next one. But uh, if you're looking for like a really cute fan fiction based like novel like that incorporates that kind of fandom world this is probably a good one for you next i read another manga and that is spy family volume one this was kind of funny so it's about a guy and he's um a spy for the his government and they give him a new mission where he ha basically has to acquire a child and a wife to infiltrate this school to get into the good graces of this guy they want him to basically like steal information from so he acquires this girl who's an orphan who's a telepath which he doesn't know and then he acquires this lady to become his wife who's actually also an assassin so it's just like really funny and none of them know each other's background the only one who knows everything is the little girl and that's just because she could read mine so she knows everything they're saying so honestly, uh, this was super cute. I definitely looking forward to continuing the series because I think it's just really funny and adorable. Next, I read a graphic novel and that was Fence by C.S. Picot. I enjoyed this for the most part. I thought it was really interesting seeing the world of fencing because I really don't know much about it and the main characters were pretty interesting. I think I will continue on with this, but I just not in a hurry. I really like the artwork though and some of the characters that you do meet I thought were really interesting as well. And then the last book I read or tried to read in January is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. Okay, I got to page 214 in this book and I finally just had to DNF it <laughs> and call it a day and say this was just a loss for me. I just really had to problem with getting into the story and getting really interested within like the the way this girl was discovering I guess the case or working the case I just I don't want to say it was boring but it just wasn't keeping my interest where I stopped I was pretty much almost over 50 percent and I feel like at that point she should have had like an even narrower list of suspects and I just felt like this was prolonging the story itself and I just didn't think it was needed and honestly as the story progressed you found out more and more about the missing girl and it just didn't really make me care like not that I wanted this girl to go missing or die or anything like that because I was learning how weird of a person she was or how like some of the bad things she was doing it just didn't really make me care about the fact that like they were trying to solve this case ultimately like I know she they weren't trying to solve it for her they're trying to solve it for the boy but still some of the ways she was getting her like information was a little sketchy 
and a little bit border illegal so I don't know it just really wasn't the book for me unfortunately and I like love YA thrillers so I thought this would just be a really good one especially since everybody had raved about it from what I had seen but yeah this just wasn't for me I decided to just go ahead and give it up after two weeks of trying to read this and almost slipping into a slump so yeah I'm so sorry for everybody who loved this but it just was not my cup of tea all right, so that was my wrap-up. So now time to get into the books I will be reading in February. I'm going to be taking part in the Valentine's Readathon. In case you don't know, it's like a bingo board, and I decided to do um, just a straight-down bingo. I'll put the picture up here somewhere, and it's going to be that last row, words of information to first date. And so for that, um, I've incorporated my February TBR with those prompts as well. I am actually taking part in the Buzzwordathon yearly challenge. I missed January's word because of not being able to find a book, but I'm gonna come back to that. But for February's word, I believe the theme for that is just a color. So I decided that I wanted to read Wings of Ebony by JL. And I'm so, so excited for this book. Um, Simon Teen sent me a signed first edition, which I am so excited to have. I literally freaked out when I saw this hit my mailbox because I was not expecting it. And I'm just I'm so excited to pick it up. So it's about a girl whose mother dies. And so she's taken away by her father who she's never really met. And he takes her to his home country, which is basically a country full of gods. So she has to basically deal with the fact that I believe she is half god. And that people don't want her there because of what her existence means. And from there, it's her trying to get back to her like city and her family to help, I guess, like save them. Mostly, that's kind of the gist that I've gotten from this synopsis, but I'm really, really looking forward to this. A lot of people said that if you liked Legendborn, then you would probably enjoy this. So I am hoping they are right and that this will become a next favorite of mine. So the next book I'm going to be reading is a buddy read that I'm going to be doing with Justice from Ariel's Library, and that is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. This is also going to be for the prompt of First Date, which is a new-to-you author. I've never really read a Holly Black book before. I think I may have read a book years ago by her, but it's been a really, really long time, and I've also never read the Cruel Prince series, so I figured it was probably a good time to try it out and see how I would feel about it. I also have these black editions, which are so pretty. So I'm definitely looking forward to reading this and uh, checking out and seeing if I like it. This will also probably be part of my next uh, vlog series. Hint, hint, in case you missed my one on Red Queen, but we shall see um, how that works out for me. And next, I will also be reading Storm Crow by Kaylin Josephson. So this is about a girl whose kingdom is invaded and the crows that basically are um, revered by everybody in her kingdom are killed by this invading empire. And in order to save her kingdom, she has to be married off to their prince. So she is constantly trying to find a way to avoid that but chaos ensues and it just sounds like a really interesting story so I'm definitely looking forward to picking this up. Next I will also be doing another Betty read and that is King's Cage by Victoria Averard. This is the third book in the Red Queen series. I'll be doing this with Kay from I Love Books OK. I am super excited to pick up where the last book left off and see what happens next because I am definitely nervous <laughs> to see what they're all up to but I'm also very very excited so I'm definitely hoping to pick this up sooner rather than later and this will be for the prompt of head over heels which is to read a book by an author whose first name is longer than their last and I'm pretty sure Victoria is longer than AVR so we're just gonna do that so the next book I have is another buddy read. This is my month of buddy reads for some reason. And that is From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I'll be buddy reading this with 
Erin from Booked and Busy. Um, we decided that we wanted to see what the, all the hype was about and to pick this up and read it. This will also be going for the prompt of gifts, which is a read a book that was given as a gift. This was given to me for Christmas, so I'm definitely looking forward to checking this out. It's definitely a big chunker, so I'm a little nervous, but we shall see. Next, I have another buddy read, I swear. I don't know what happened with this month, but I just got signed up for all the buddy reads. And that is Kingdom of Souls by Raina Bear. I tried reading this last summer and I was just in such a bad slump that I decided to put it down and give it a try again later because I didn't want to uh, miss out on a good story because of my mood. So this is later. I'm going to be, bud be buddy reading this with Monet from Life with Monet and Kay from I Love Books OK and I'm hoping that I will like it this time around more than I did last time when I was in my slump. So I'm definitely looking forward to checking this out and seeing what everybody has loved about it overall. Then the last prompt I'm doing for the Valentine's Day Readathon is Words of Affirmation, which is a readable blurbed by a favorite author. And Wings of Ebony actually fits this one as well because it is blurbed by my favorite author, Saba Tahir, on the back. So that will count for that. All right, and then next I have one more buddy read, and this is my last buddy read of the month, I promise, and that is Crescent City by Sarah J Moss or House of Earth and Blood, and I will be buddy reading this with Aaron from Booked and Busy and Monty from Monty Price, and I'm definitely looking forward to checking this out and trying this again, because I did start it last year, and again, I was in a slump, so I decided to put it down, um, but I'm excited to pick it up again and see if I enjoy it. All right, and then the next few books that I also put on my TBR are just books that I put on because of whatever. So the next book I have is Mari and the Night Brothers by B.B. Alston. I am really excited to check this out. I've heard such good things about it. This is an advanced reader copy that I got from work. So I figured it was time to read it this month because I want to read it sooner rather than later and see what everybody is loving about this because it just seems so fun. Um, I believe it's about a girl who is trying to find her I think her brother or what happened to her brother or something like that. I'm just really excited. It's super cute and a middle kid with a black girl always catches my interest. So definitely looking forward to this. Now the next book I am going to give a try this month is Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas. This is another arc that I got from work. Um, this came out last month along with Amari and the Night Brothers and so that's why I want to read both of these this month because I want to read them sooner rather than later. I've loved um, The Hate You Give and On the Come Up by Angie Thomas so I'm sure I will definitely enjoy this as well. This is basically a prequel to The Hate You Give and it's about Maverick and his story and um, what he went through in his teens from like dealing with like gang violence and being a teenage father in jail and all that kind of stuff so I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how Andy Thomas shaped the story. All right and then the next book I want to read is Always and Forever Laura Jean by Jenny Han. This is the last book in the To All the Boys I've Loved Before trilogy and so the last movie is coming out in th this month. I th think on the 12th, I think. And so I definitely want to get this read either before it comes out or just before this month ends so I can read the book before the movie and continue my tradition of doing that. And so I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how this all ends and just feeling all the emotions and just seeing what happens with Laura Jean and Peter Kay and all the crew basically. Last book that I am going to be reading for the month of February is Cinder by Marissa Meyer. I've heard such good things about this and I'm definitely looking forward to checking it out. It is on my winter TBR so I'm definitely trying to also get that off the list. <laughs> uh, so I'm definitely definitely looking forward to this. I'm kind of just going in with as little knowledge as possible because uh, I know this is such a hyped book and I kind of want to go in with just my own fresh take of it all if that makes sense so definitely excited this is kind of like my first sci-fi that I'm willingly reading so we'll see how that goes hey friends it's editing Alana here um I forgot to mention another book that I'm doing actually two books that I'm doing so that's my bad so I'm actually gonna be co-hosting two book clubs this month with some friends which I'm totally thankful to them for asking I was actually not expecting to be asked for anything at all um the first one I'm going to be doing Marcy from Neku the Media Lock I believe that's their channel name is hosting a comic live show 
on February 18th at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central. And we're going to be reading the first volume of A Tropical Fish Yearns for Snow. I think it's a sapphic contemporary manga. So I'm actually really excited to check this out. It looks really cute. So definitely come and join us on that live show. So that's one book that I will be doing for a book club. And then the other book club I am doing that I actually just got asked today to do, um, my friend Jessica from Jessica Noble Dickerson, she asked me to co-host February for her Brown Girl book club. And the book pick that she chose for that one is Make a Scene by Mimi Grace. Um, I've never heard of this author before, so I'm definitely looking forward to checking this out. I believe it's a contemporary and it has the fake dating trope and it's set in a bakery, so that sounds really fun. So I'm really like looking forward to co-hosting for with these two friends and thank you to them for uh asking me to join because was not expecting that so yeah that is uh two more books i will actually be reading this month pray for me because i think i probably went a little overboard with my planning but it's february so why not? <laughs> Alrighty, so so sorry this is so long, but that was my January wrap up and my February TBR. Thank you all so much for watching if you've made it this far. <laughs> if you like the video, please go ahead and give it a good old thumbs up down below. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, please leave all that in the comment section. And if you're not good at commenting, I'm gonna go ahead and say leave me an emoji. Leave me a little like heart emoji or something because Valentine's Day is coming up or whatever. And if you want to see more videos from me, please hit that subscribe button down below. You are all sunflowers in a world full of weeds.